So in this video we're going to finish up the story of how proteins are constructed by talking about translation. So we're assuming that transcription has already occurred. We've created a messenger RNA. Um, if you're in a eukaryotic cell, the messenger RNA needs to have already left the nucleus. Um, and then all of these events that we're talking about take place in the cytoplasm. Uh, a very brief note, prokaryotes can do transcription and translation simultaneously. Remember that since they don't have a nucleus, those steps are really taking place sort of both in the cytoplasm. And so sometimes an RNA polymerase cannot even be finished copying the gene when maybe behind it a ribosome has already clamped onto the message and is starting to build the protein uh, from that message. That can't happen in eukaryotes because the nucleus is going to separate the two steps. Okay, so we've got three major players in translation, all of them RNAs. So we've got uh, the messenger RNA, um, who is carrying the code and sort of, um, uh, uh, the way I'm going to put it is the, the messenger RNA kind of calls for amino acids to come in the right order. Um, we've got transfer RNAs, or tRNAs. We call them transfer RNAs because they are transferring the one amino acid that, that, that they carry to the correct place. They're going to transfer it to the ribosome. Um, the uh, ribosome actually comes in two pieces at first, and it kind of clamps on. Um, so the ribosome is actually primarily uh, constituted of an RNA we just call rRNA, um, the R for ribosome. Um, and the ribosome's job is really to um, combine the amino acids together through peptide bonds. Recall that in primary structure, peptide bonds are what uh, link amino acids together. So um, combine them as they are brought in by the transfer RNAs. Okay, so let's just kind of uh, keep going with that story. The bottom part of this picture kind of shows that in process. Here's the mRNA code kind of going through the, ri uh, the ribosome that has attached. Uh, step one really is that the, the ribosome needs to attach in the first place. So the rRNA also helps um, the two subunits kind of attach in the right place, the protein coding part of the messenger RNA. So once it attaches, tRNAs are really able to come in and um, come into the right place, uh, drop off their amino acid. You can see that you know, sort of a tRNA kind of carries the whole chain of amino acids until the next one comes in. Then the new guy comes in and kind of takes the place of the old guy and um, takes the rest of the chain too. The, the rRNA will combine the new amino acid with the one that came right before it in a peptide bond. And then the old tRNA can leave the ribosome and the uh, tRNAs can go pick up their particular amino acid that should just be available in the cytoplasm so that they can kind of recharge themselves and deliver another amino acid of that type. So um, that's kind of the, the basic uh, of how translation works. I kind of like this picture because this picture shows us a little bit more in detail what's going on. Um, once again, here's the messenger RNA. And what I really want you to notice is that the messenger RNA is sort of read in a group of three letters. So three letters kind of corresponds with one amino acid. And that group of three letters in mRNA is called a codon. So you can sort of think of the, the mRNA as being read in groups of three letters. That's really what the tRNA does. The tRNA comes in and binds with that codon. The tRNA can bind there because the tRNA itself also has a group of three letters um, that um, are complementary to the mRNA codon. So the three letters in tRNA, let's see if I can spell that right, um, we call the anticodon. We call it the anticodon because, again, those three letters need to be anti or opposite the mRNA codon so that they pair up with temporary hydrogen bonds. So just as a brief example, maybe the mRNA codon is something like UGG, um, and then so the tRNA would need to carry letters that are complementary to that, say ACC. So that's sort of how a tRNA knows where to deliver its amino acid. 
Um, you can think of the mRNA codon as like calling for a particular amino acid, and then that tRNA with that particular anticodon can deliver that amino acid um, to that spot in particular. So these little um, colored spheres here sort of represent the amino acid being delivered. Why is it so important that we deliver the amino acid to the right place? Because remember that a protein's primary structure, the particular order of the amino acids, will really matter as it starts to fold up into its three-dimensional conformation. That will give it its shape and, and thus its function. So we need to make sure we, we build the protein out of the correct amino acids in the correct order. All right. So um, how does that actually work? We have kind of figured out, we've cracked the code. We've figured out how mRNA codons call for specific amino acids. So um, this is kind of a complicated looking chart. I'm going to give you a chart that looks a little different. You'll always have access to a chart in, in, in order to do translation with me. Um, but essentially, you, you sort of figure out what the three letters are, and then what these are telling you right here. These are like the, the three-letter abbreviations of amino acids. So SER actually stands for serine. Um, you're not going to have to memorize the amino acids uh, for this course. You'll just use the three-letter abbreviations, and that's fine. Um, but it's just kind of neat that, that we have this little molecular system for calling for the right amino acids. And the other thing I really want to emphasize about this chart is that it's, it's a practically universal translation system for really all living species. There are a few minor exceptions for a few amino acids that are slightly different and just a few prokaryotic bacterial species. Um, but the vast majority of species on this planet build their proteins from the exact same coding. That's pretty interesting and, and, and definitely a, a very strong piece of evidence for common ancestry of all living things. And the other reason why I just briefly want to highlight that is that that's re what really makes genetic engineering possible. Um, we can transfer pieces of DNA code from species to species because they read it and, and build proteins the exact same way. Okay, so um, how does translation come to an end? Um, it comes to an end when the ribosome reaches the stop codon in the protein coding part of the messenger RNA. Um, as it turns out, a tRNA still comes um, to that stop codon with its anticodon, but instead of carrying an amino acid, that tRNA just carries something called a release factor, and that's what's going to cause the protein to be released from the ribosome. Um, if it's a cytoplasmic protein, it will just sort of uh, end up in the cytoplasm and it will probably start folding up into its proper 3D shape. Um, in a few cases, it might go somewhere else. We'll talk about that in just a minute. So here is just an attempt to summarize um, what I talked about so far in words. Um, I'm going to move through this pretty quickly because I kind of already said this, but if you want to pause and just sort of um, see it in word form, um, then please feel free. Uh, you need to be able to tell me the roles of messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. You want to tell me who has the codons, that's messenger RNA, and who has the anticodons, that's transfer RNA. Why do we call it transfer RNA? Because it transfers amino acids to the ribosome, and the ribosome actually puts it together with the rRNA that makes it up. Okay. Uh, there's a stop codon, and that's what causes the process to finish. Great. So let's just talk about what might happen after translation. Um, the rRNA um, subunits, um, so remember that the ribosome came in two pieces, and it's going to leave in two pieces again. It uh, pretty much can be recycled. It might go find another messenger RNA, clamp onto it, and start constructing the, the polypeptide correctly there. Uh, messenger RNA itself might also be recycled. Um, we briefly in the last video kind of talked about the idea of, of other parts of the messenger RNA that aren't translated might sort of um, code for how long it lasts in the cytoplasm. So in some cases, messenger RNAs might be translated multiple times. In other cases, it might only be translated a few times before it's chopped up into little RNA nucleotides again. Transfer RNAs, as I briefly talked about, can also go into the cytoplasm and pick up another of its particular amino acid um, and be recycled as well.
All right, so let's just do some brief coding work and then we will be finished. Um, how do you work with um, uh, transcription and then how do you do translation? So um, for the transcription step, um, you just need to uh, remind yourself what pairs up with what DNA letter. Um, so you, is this writing? Okay, U pairs with A, uh, C pairs with G, A, U, G, C, and I'll just kind of quickly go through this. Or if you wanted to pause it and see if you could do it yourself, you're certainly welcome to do that. Okay, um, so I've got my transcript, and now um, if I wanted to simulate the process of translation, um, the first thing that I would want to do is I'd want to find my start codon. Remember that, that the, the mature mRNA might have lots of extra letters that aren't actually read by the ribosome. The ribosome clamps around the start codon. Um, this is listed on the sheet that I will always give you, um, but you'll pretty quickly figure out that the start codon is always AUG. Um, so you can kind of start with that. That's your first group of three letters. I like to go ahead and, and, and make divisions then and make groups of three letters so that I make sure I read them three at a time. And then I like to use my chart to figure out what my actual amino acids are. Um, you'll see that AUG is always methionine. Sometimes methionine gets cut off later, so it, it isn't in every single protein necessarily. Uh, CGU is arginine, GCU is alanine, and then um, somewhere there's a stop codon. Um, this is definitely an oversimplification. Proteins are not three amino acids long. Uh, typical proteins are hundreds or even thousands of amino acids long, um, but I won't make you translate that much. Okay. So, last but not least, sometimes in eukaryotes, uh, some additional modifications might occur to the protein. Uh, the ribosome will construct the initial protein, but sometimes um, uh, if the protein is destined to be cytoplasmic, remember that the ribosome just releases it. This is a conversation I talked about back in the cells unit. Um, if a protein is destined to end up in the membrane or leave the cell, be secreted, recall that the ribosome actually takes the protein and, and releases it into the endoplasmic reticulum for modification. Um, and then the protein also travels to the Golgi for final modification. Um, that's, that's a really quick synopsis, um, but again, the video I made about this in the cells unit uh, might be someplace you go to review. All right, so um, in these two videos, we try to talk about the processes of transcription and translation, how to build a protein correctly from the DNA code.